Well, hello, folks. Mr. G here today to talk to you about the most important uh, topic in the unit on work, energy, and power, and that's this idea of the law of conservation of energy. And you may recall we've done a previous conservation law when we were talking about the law of conservation of momentum. So let's get right into it. And the first thing we need to go through is just the wording of the law, and it states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed from one form into another. When we use the term that we have lost some energy, the true fact is we haven't lost any energy at all. It's just been converted into something else. Uh, if you think about two cars smacking together, they obviously come to a stop. Is there an energy loss there? No, it's just been converted into other things like heat and like sound. Uh, if we take a look at a situation like this, let's imagine we're throwing a ball up into the air. Uh, at the very bottom, as the ball is moving, the idea, of course, is that the ball starts off moving, so we've already thrown it out of our hand. Right here, we have nothing but kinetic energy. There is potential energy if we measure it relative to the ground, but let's say we're measuring it relative to that line there. So at this point, we have nothing but kinetic energy, no potential energy, and we're moving up like this. Well, about halfway now, we're going to have some kinetic energy, and we're going to have some potential energy, because now all of a sudden we have a height above our relative uh, horizontal, but at the same time we still have motion. At the top of the arc though, now we have nothing but potential energy, because the ball is essentially not moving. Well, it's, it's actually not moving, it's at instantaneously at a velocity of zero. And as we go back down, it's exactly the same idea. It's a symmetric parabolic shape. So, we can talk about it in terms of these particular words. As the ball does travel up, uh, EK is converted into potential energy because it's not stopping because it's lost energy. We're just converting it now into potential energy. We're gaining a height above our horizontal. And as the ball falls, again, we're converting it the other way. Um, this is very, very similar to a pendulum. Uh, you can think at the highest point of its swing when it is instantaneously not moving, we have nothing but potential energy. If we consider the lowest point of the ball as our horizon, uh, you'll see that we are some kind of height above it. But as we start moving forward, all we have at the absolute low point is uh, kinetic energy. Is there potential energy? Well, of course there is if we're considering it above the ground. But again, if we consider that low point as h equal to zero, uh, then all we would have to deal with is kinetic energy with some sort of velocity. And again, on the other end, we're going to end up with a potential energy, which again, is it going to be equal to the potential energy on the other side? Well, we're going to talk about how that may not necessarily be true because there's going to be some other forces at play. So let's ask a question like this. If we have a nice big roller coaster, I think we've all probably been on one. Uh, why is it that the biggest hill is always at the beginning and every hill after isn't necessarily the largest? Now, there may be some newer roller coasters that have some sort of accelerating feature halfway through, uh, which could give us a, another large hill. But at the end of the day, this is all coming back to conservation of energy. The fact that when we have our initial potential energy at our highest point, uh, after that drop, we're never going to gain back uh, the same amount of potential energy or kinetic energy because there has been some energy lost. And the question is, where do we lose energy? Well, if we take a look at a bouncing ball here, you can think of what a bouncing ball sounds like. The fact that you hear a sound means that there is some kind of lost energy. So again, just to state that uh, kinetic energy is con converted into potential energy and vice versa. As it bounces back up, it's gaining potential. As it can falls back down, it's gaining kinetic. But ideas like friction, uh, you can talk about air friction, you can talk about friction uh, between the ball and the surface. You can talk about heat, the fact that when it bounces, it's going to compress the ball, uh, thus generating heat. You're going to talk about the sound again, the fact that sound is an energy conversion. So there's all of these ideas that come into play, which in the end results in the maximum height always dropping to the point where it bounces so very, very small and eventually comes to a stop. Now, if we're looking at the formulas involved with the law of conservation of energy, uh, we're really looking at these three ideas. Uh, in its most general form, the change in kinetic energy has to be equal to the negative change in potential. That should make absolute sense because as we are 
converting kinetic energy into potential, we're essentially, quote unquote, losing kinetic energy to gain potential, which means there is this direct relation. So we have to have this negative sign to show that the quantities are in fact equal to each other, uh, just as we lose one, we gain the other. Uh, in its more general or more specific form, we got the idea that our kinetic energy initially and our potentially or potential energy initially, the sum of those two have to equal the sum of the energies after. Now, again, this is the idea uh, that we are going to talk about perfect world where energy before equals energy after, and we don't have to take into account any other uh, types of energy conversion. So there will be no lost energy in our perfect world type situations. So if we were to plug in the equations, you'll notice that it's one half mv initial squared plus mgh initials is equal to etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know your equation for kinetic energy you know your equation for potential energy let's use this in a situation uh, while jumping over the great wall of china an 82 kilogram skateboarder is needing to leave the ramp traveling at 78 kilometers per hour how much potential energy does he need to start with so if we take a look uh, the first thing we need to do before anything we'll put down here uh, is we need to convert 78 kilometers per hour into SI units. Now you may remember that we have this 3.6 that we play with or we use proportional reasoning, but I'm gonna imagine at this point in your physics career, you should be able to get 21.67 meters per second. And now that we have that, what do we do? Well, how much potential energy did he need to start with? Well, if we think about the initial energy has to equal the final energy, uh, and we plug in our our initial potential plus our initial kinetic has to equal our final potential plus our final kinetic. Well, before he's moving, there is no velocity, which means that there is no initial kinetic energy. But afterwards, we will assume that he has made the jump, he has done his full height, there is going to be no potential energy, only kinetic. So in this case, our initial potential has to equal our final kinetic. Now we can plug in values. Well, our potential is equal to our kinetic final, which is going to be equal to 1 half m v final squared. And I'm going to go up here because I've taken up too much room, uh, which is equal to 1 half times 82 times 21.67 squared. Remember that velocity in this case is speed. So there is no direction, doesn't matter, energy is energy, uh, which is equal to 1,009, or sorry, 19,247 joules. Uh, if you go to sig figs, that'd be 19,000 joules. All right, so there we have it. So again, exploiting the uh, law of conservation of energy, we should be able to get what our kinetic energy is after the fact. Now, if we go to B, what minimum height of ramp should he use? Well, for that now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna erase some of this stuff. And we're gonna remember that from A, we got 19,247 joules. And for B now, if we need to know what minimum height the ramp should be, we're going back to the actual formula for potential energy, which is mg times our initial height. And if we have that, we already know what our potential energy is supposed to be, so let's solve for initial height. And that's going to be potential energy initial divided by mg. Plugging it in, again, we know that it's 19,247 joules divided by 82 times 9.8. And if you've done all the calculating correctly, we should end up with something around 24 meters. So again, we were able to find the energy without necessarily knowing anything about the ramp, but once we have the energy, we can start to imply uh, certain properties about the ramp. So that is probably the most fundamental type of conservation of energy question. Let's look at a different one. Uh, trampoline dunk artist, I know we've all seen these, think of the gorilla for the Phoenix Suns, definitely an example, is bounced to a maximum vertical height of 4.8 meters before launching himself towards the hoop. At the top of his arc, he is 3.2 meters above the ground. How fast is he traveling at this point? So we need to make sure we draw the picture correctly. So again, he is bounced on the trampoline 
to a height of 4.8 meters. So if we draw, there he is. Let's say there's the trampoline right there. And we know that he is 4.8 meters above the ground. And after he bounces, so we'll do a nice little dash line, he is going to arc out to a maximum height of 3.2 meters. Now, some folks may be looking at my drawing and going, well, do you include the height of the trampoline and stuff like that? Let's imagine the trampoline is built into the ground. I just built it so that it was more easily seen. Uh, so we know that his, what his height final is. We know what his height initial is. And the question is, how fast must he be traveling? Well, again, our energy initial has to equal our energy final. And we know that this is EK initial plus EP initial. And that has to equal EK final plus EP final. But in this case, again, initially speaking, he is at a height of 4.8 meters, but he is not moving. So we have no kinetic energy initial. Afterwards, however, do we still have a height? Yes. Do we also have a motion? Of course we do. So we can't cancel anything else out. So let's plug these ideas in. MGH initial has to equal 1 half MV final squared plus MGH final. All right. Now there is one variable we can get rid of, and that, in fact, is the mass. There's a mass in all of these. So away we go. There may have been some people stressing out because I didn't give you the mass of the person. You may recall from projectile motion that when an object is actually in motion, uh, the mass is actually uh, irrelevant to its path. So at this point, we need to solve for VF. And if we solve for VF, those of you that are algebra geniuses should very quickly come to this equation right here. Now, this is the most simplified form. Do you always have to have it like this? Sure, why not? Challenge yourself. And let's plug in our values. We have this, and the g is 9.8. The height was 4.8. I'm going to put that other bracket around. Notice that 2 is going to be multiplying all of it. Subtract 9.8 times 3.2. And if you've done all the calculating right, you should end up with a value of 5.6 meters per second. So again, we exploited the fact that initially there was all potential, no kinetic, uh, but afterwards there was definitely some of both because there was a height above the ground, but we definitely know we were moving. Okay, so again, classic example. Notice that the mass canceled. Big deal. All right, we'll do one more and then I'll set you free. Uh, pretty classic example goes back to our roller coaster type idea. A 65 kilogram snowboarder starts at rest travels down a hill into a gully and back up the other side as shown. Find his speed at the top of the second hill. So, uh, you notice that we have a couple heights here. We could deal with this considering the very, very bottom of the hills as, the, uh, as our horizontal. However, I want to make this a little easier. I want to go right here. And I want to draw it so that we're essentially negating the 25 meters making our height drop uh, actually end up being 20 meters. Now, when we do this, we're going to assume, okay, we're going to assume that our potential energy is zero at this point, that there is still motion occurring. So you can imagine that this, this guy is going down a ramp, starting at 20 meters, getting to that point there so that we have essentially converted all kinetic energy into potential. Well, this makes this question a whole lot easier. If we start off with our law of conservation of energy, we know that our energies before need to equal our energies after. We know that at the beginning now, when he's at the top of the hill, there is absolutely no kinetic energy. And when he's at the bottom, again, if we're assuming that all the motion led to that point and there is no potential energy uh, at that point, all we have is kinetic. So it's going to take you a little while to wrap your brains around that, uh, but I have no doubt that you're going to get there. So potential energy initial is going to be equal to kinetic energy final. Uh, if we plug in our values, mgh initial is equal to 1 half mvf squared. Our masses cancel. And what we're looking for is the speed. So in this case, I'll go back up here. We solve for v, and again, as I know you're all capable of doing the algebra, 2GH initial 
plug in all your values, you should end up with a beautiful right around 20 meters per second. So again, the whole idea behind law of conservation of energy is very similar to the idea of law of conservation of momentum. Look to see what cancels, and once you figure that out, now you can go along with the question. So you are equipped with all the knowledge that you need, I think. Uh, good luck with your future questions, and we'll talk to you soon.